Hey guys, good morning. It is Jen here with P40 Ministries. Today we are in Genesis chapter 11, verses 10 through, let's see here, 32. This is going to finish out the chapter, and we are going to be dis- discussing the uh, descendants of Shem today. And I will read out of the NLT version of the Bible. I love the W.E.B. version because I really do think it's a great version and everything that they did with it, but sometimes it's not super readable. So I prefer the NLT version because it kind of simplifies things, especially with this chapter, because there's a lot of weird names in this one. So So I'm going to start by reading verse 10. This is the account of Shem's family. Two years after the great flood, when Shem was 100 years old, he became the father of Arphaxad. After the birth of Arphaxad, Shem lived another 500 years and had other sons and daughters. When Arphaxad was 35 years old, he became the father of Shelah. After the birth of Shelah, Arphaxad lived another 403 years and he had other sons and daughters. When Shelah was 30 years old, he became the father of Eber. After the birth of Eber, Shelah lived 403 years and had other sons and daughters. When Eber was 34 years old, he became the father of Peleg. After the birth of Peleg, Eber lived another 430 years and had other sons and daughters. When Peleg was 30 years old, he became the father of Ru. After the birth of Ru, Peleg lived another 209 years and had other sons and daughters. When Ru was 32 years old, he became the father of Serug. After the birth of Serug, Ru lived another 207 years and he had other sons and daughters. When Serug was 30 years old, he became the father of Nahor. After the birth of Nahor, Surig lived another 200 years and he had other sons and daughters. When Nahor was 29 years old, he became the father of Terah. After the birth of Terah, Nahor lived another 119 years and he had other sons and daughters. After Terah was 70 years old, he became the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. This is the account of Terah's family. Terah was the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran was the father of Lot. But Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans, the land of his birth, while his father Terah was still living. Meanwhile, Abram and Nahor both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah. Milcah and her sister Iscah were daughters of Nahor's brother Haran. But Sarai was unable to become pregnant and had no children. One day, Terah took his son Abram, his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife, and his grandson Lot, his son Haran's child, and moved away from Ur of the Chaldeans. He was headed for the land of Canaan, but they stopped at Haran and settled there. Terah lived for 205 years and died while still in Haran. So that might be the most I've ever read in um, uh, one of these episodes before, mainly because there's just a lot to this one and to Shem's family line. Now we know from previous episodes and from the Bible that Shem was the son of Noah. But I want you to notice something kind of interesting here. First off, they only talk about Shem's descendants down to Abram, because it does say each son had other sons and daughters, but they're only mentioning the ones that are Abram's ancestors. And Abram, we know mainly as Abraham when God renames him later on. But his name is not yet Abraham. It is Abram. But these are the descendants all the way from Shem to Abram. And there were other people than just these. Obviously, there was a lot of people because it says that each son had other sons and daughters. I want you to notice something else, too. It's kind of interesting. So it says here that Shem was 600 years old when he died, right? And then Arphaxad, his son, was 438 when he died. And then if you keep going down the line... You will see that, let's see, Peleg was 239 years old when he died. And then when you get to Nahor, he was 148 when he died. And that was Abram's grandfather, Nahor. We're going to go back to Genesis 6 for a second and take a look at that. There is a lot of information in Genesis 6, and I keep referring back to it. But I don't know if we really discussed this too much, but... 
if you read Genesis 6, verse 3, it says here, Then the Lord said, My spirit will not put up with humans for such a long time, for they are only mortal flesh. In the future, their normal lifespan will be no more than 120 years. And like I said, I don't remember if I covered that too much. I think I did. But we can see that already happening. And this is only several generations after the Great Flood. And people are already starting to die off sooner. And for example, Abram's grandfather lived to only be 148. So you can see that it's only been like eight generations, maybe less than that, since since the Great Flood. And people are already dying quicker and quicker and quicker. And I believe that is because God was saying that after the flood, I am not going to put up with humanity for so long because... They are humans, they are flesh, and their normal lifespan should be 120 years so that they don't keep falling into the same patterns of sin over and over and over in their lifespan. And then it goes on in verse 27 to talk about the family of Terah. Now, Terah was Abram's father, and it introduces Terah, Abram, and Nahor, who was Abram's brother. And then it also uh, introduces Nahor's wife and Abram's wife. But if you notice something about Abram's wife, it says here in verse 29, it says, Abram's wife was Sarai. And then in verse 30, it says, but Sarai was unable to become pregnant and had no children. So that is the very first thing we learn about Sarai. And like I said, her name changes too. And we know her as Sarah later on. And Abram as Abraham, but right now her name is Sarai, and she was unable to become pregnant and had no children. That is the very first thing she is labeled as, is a woman who cannot have children. And I find that very interesting because that is a huge part of Abram's and Sarai's stories, is the fact that they were unable to have children. So then it says in verse 31 that Terah, or Abram's father, takes Abram and Abram's wife, Sarai, and also Lot, who was Abram's nephew. And he takes them away and he lives in Haran with them. And that's actually an important part of the story as well, because Abram lived with his father. And so did Sarai as well. And we'll find out why that is significant on Monday. And I hope that you join me then and that You enjoy these little history lessons from the Bible because I think they're really cool learning about all these different descendants and things like that because these are all pointing us to Jesus Christ because we have the information right here. This has all been recorded that Jesus is from the line of Abram or Abraham, as we will learn later on. And there's even a portion in scripture that goes all the way back to Adam to tell Jesus's bloodline all the way from Adam. And I find that really, really interesting. This is all recorded in scripture. So join me on Monday, 6.30 a.m. for another discussion about Abram. And this will really be the start of Abram's story that we talk about on Monday. So join me then. I hope that you have a fabulous weekend and that you enjoy the blog post that is up tomorrow. Uh, Make sure to let me know if you would prefer if I read a blog post to you guys on Saturdays on the podcast. Let me know. Go to my Facebook page and like it and send me a message and let me know if you would enjoy that on Saturdays. But until then, happy listening and God bless.